the younger you begin filling the mind and the heart with the Word of God, the more of His power you experience when you grow up. The younger you begin to make your heart a home for the Word of God, the more peaceful, contented, and joyful you will be later on because there is indescribable power in the Word of God. You know, here at Leading the Way, we produce a world-class monthly publication called My Journal. It will help you, it will instruct you, it will bless you, and it is free. So will you write to us, call us in any way you can, get in touch with us so we can send it to you. My Journal is the monthly publication of Leading the Way with Dr. Michael Youssef. And Jesus said that in the Beatitudes. Each month, My Journal offers practical weekly devotionals from Dr. Youssef and exciting ministry reports from our on-the-ground field teams. This is a great resource to not only cultivate your personal faith, but to also stay informed about how God is moving in our world today. As our gift to you, we would like to send you a free six-month subscription to encourage you in your walk with Christ. To receive your free My Journal, call now or sign up at ltw.org. The moment we take our eyes off Jesus, there's going to be all kinds of problems, all kinds of offenses. The man who was discipled me when I was 17 and a half, 18 years old, and, and he taught me some things that I still remember more than some theologians. And one of the things that he taught me over and over and over again, he said, if you ever want to fall and fail miserably, keep your eyes on church leaders. And the bigger they are, you keep your eyes on them. I don't mean, he doesn't mean size. The bigger they are, the greater your fall. Never forgotten that. Never forgotten that. I sought with all my heart to teach you the importance of keeping your eyes on Jesus. But how do you keep your eyes on Jesus? By constantly keeping your eye on the Word of God. Himerat, please. The secret of God's protection is in the secret of His presence. And the secret of God's presence is in the secret of keeping His Word. Now, before we read this section of the psalm, those eight verses, I want to tell you a few things about Psalm 119. It is 176 verses. It's the longest psalm in the Bible. And it's divided into 22 sections. You see them in your Bibles. Each section is numbered, not in numbers like one, two, three, four. Each section is numbered by the Hebrew alphabet. And so you get the letter Aleph, which equal equivalent to A. That's the beginning, Aleph. Beth, B, and so on. Each of these sections have different emphasis, but they all, the whole psalm basically has to do with the importance of the Word of God. Now, I selected for today the second section, Beth, B equivalent, the second letter of alphabet. And like in the English language, the letter B can be just the letter of the alphabet, or if you say, let it be, it's a, and be in this case is a word. But when we hear it, it's the same, letter B or the letter B. Now, in the Hebrew language, those letters have meaning that they can be a word by themselves or just a letter. In this case, Beth, or the letter B, 
means house, from which we get Bethlehem, Bethlehem, or Beth El, Bethel, the house of God. This section of Psalm 119 tells us that the only real protection a person can have is when the Word of God finds a home. That's why the letter Beth, of Beth means a house. Unless the Word of God finds a home in our hearts. And that is why Paul said, let the Word of God dwell richly where? In your hearts. But there is a world of difference, my beloved friend, listen carefully. There's a world of difference between fighting the enemy in your own strength or trying to overcome temptation by your own strength uh, and fighting in the power of the Word of God. And that is why Psalm 119 verses 9 to 16 tells us two very important things. Write them down if you're taking notes. First of all, it tells us about this indescribable power of the Word of God, verses 9 to 12. Then it tells us about the incalculable preeminence of the Word of God, verses 13 to 16. Question, how do you experience the power of the Word of God? In verse 9, it tells us that it has the power to cleanse us. And in verse 10, it tells us that it has the power to control us. And in verse 11, it tells us that it has the power to correct us. Here it is. Cleanse, control, correct. How can a person keep his or her way pure? By obedience to the Word of God. The psalmist is saying that when it comes to character and conduct, and we're talking, our culture always talk about ethics, and they teach ethics in the schools, my goodness gracious, and they never, they don't know what the word means. The conduct, character, all those word, buzzwords that we throw around. But he is saying to us, when it comes to character, when it comes to conduct, uh, no amount of goodwill, no amount of good intentions, no amount of good efforts, no amount of good anything will achieve the desired effect. These do-gooders give you false advice, give you lies. They have never taken you to the shepherd's spinal clinic to show you the effect of drunken driving. They never take you to an STD clinic to show you the result of promiscuity. They never take you to a psychiatrist or a psychologist to show you uh, how there are broken hearts and damaged emotions and shattered relationships and fear of intimacy and pain of addiction. They don't. You have to sadly experience that for yourself. But the Word of God warns us. The psalmist is telling us something that the world will never never, never comprehend, let alone understand. He is saying the younger you begin filling the mind and the heart with the Word of God, the more of His power you experience when you grow up. The younger you begin to make your heart a home for the Word of God, the more peaceful, contented, and joyful you will be Later on, I cannot begin to tell you how many I have encountered in the 45 years in the ministry uh, who suffered this awful addictions and, and the destructive behaviors, the inability to relate to spouse and the inability to relate uh, just to love another person. These are all the results of bad seeds that have been planted early in life. Habits and undisciplined life begins early in life. But thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God at any age and at any stage, the Word of God, when it's applied, it has power to purify. The power of the Word of God not only cleanses, but it also controls. Verse 10, with my whole heart I sought you. Don't let me wander from your commands. In other words, keep me under the control of the Word of God. The power of the Word of God does what? What's the first one? 
Good. The second, third, situational ethics, which is taught in many even Christian environments and Christian colleges, teaches that our actions depend on the circumstances. They just depend on the surroundings. <laughs> but God's Word said, do the right thing when nobody's watching. When Joseph was sold into slavery in Egypt, as you know, the Bible was not written. The Word of God was not there. <laughs> ah, but Daddy Jacob, Granddaddy Isaac, and most likely great-grandpa Abraham have taught Joseph to fear the Lord. And that did it. In the times of temptation, Joseph could have thought, man, I can get ahead in politics. I can get ahead with the Pharaoh's household. I can become rich. I can become powerful. I could experience success. Man, this is, this is my chance. But he said, no. The power of the Word of God cleanses. The power of the Word of God controls. The power of the Word of God corrects. Why? Because there is indescribable power in the Word of God. Secondly, there is incalculable preeminence in the Word of God. Look at verses 13 to 16. Beloved, our generation seems to know the price of everything and the value of nothing. <laughs> the value of the Word of God is incalculable. There is no calculator that can work. And I want to give you three exercises, the all from the Word of God. To treasure the Word of God in your heart is wonderful. It's very good. But you cannot stop there. For the Word of God to have preeminence, we must learn how to apply the Word of God in every area of our life and in every circumstance we face. <laughs> I knew some people in the past who memorized the Word of God, and yet their life was contrary to the Word of God. What's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with this picture? Well, that gives me now the segue to come to the three exercises I want you to have. Write them down. The first exercise is that you must speak the Word of God. Verbalize it. The second exercise, that's verse 13. The second exercise, verses 14 and 15, is that you must savor the Word of God. You speak it and you savor it. And thirdly, the third exercise is that you must substantiate the Word of God in your life. That's verse 16. The psalmist said, with my lips I have told of all your ordinance. <laughs> Beloved, reading the Word of God right is wonderful. Meditating upon the Word of God rightly is fantastic. Saturating your mind in the Word of God, great. Absolutely great. But then... If it's really going to help you, if it's going to build you up, if it's going to bless you, if you're going to experience its power, then you must be able to, first of all, verbalize it. Verbalize it. Ah, oh, Michael, are you saying to us that every one of us should become a Bible teacher? Hello? Yes. It's <laughs> exactly what I'm saying. It's exactly what I'm saying. Every one of us. <laughs> How? By sharing with family and friends and whoever would listen. <laughs> sharing what? Sharing what the Word of God taught you on a given day. Uh, sharing with others how the Word of God enriched your life. How in reading and studying the Word of God guided you and guided your steps as you verbalize the Word of God to whomever would listen to you. You are being built from the inside out. The second exercise is savoring the Word of God. What's that mean? Verse 14, I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as some rejoice in great riches. 
I'm going to take you into fantasy land. Just for a couple of minutes, no more. I want to bring you back, okay? Don't stay there. Suppose you go home this afternoon and you get a phone call. And in that phone call, you're told that you have a rich uncle whom you really did not know existed, has died, and left you a fortune. How do you react? You call your pastor, right? <laughs> Listen, uh, I, I'm too realistic. Uh, no expectations in that. I, I know human nature very well, but, <laughs> but what your reaction? I mean, you're jumping up and down. You're excited. I mean, you tell your family members. You call them immediately. And let them know. You, you want everybody to know what happened. You call your best friend, and, and you're celebrating. And I mean, you're on cloud nine, right? And the psalmist said that this is how you should feel about the Word of God. It's like having inherited a fortune every day. Every day. You are so joyful, you're overwhelmed, and you cannot wait to share it with others. The preeminence of the Word of God causes us to verbalize the Word of God to others. The preeminence of the Word of God causes us to savor and rejoice in sharing with joy, with others. And thirdly, the third exercise, because it's the preeminence of the Word of God is found in substantiating it in your life. Substantiating it. What does that mean? Speaking it, yes. Savoring it, yes. Verse 16, substantiating it. <laughs> I shall delight in your statutes. I shall not forget your word. How? How? By allow the word of God to be demonstrated in your life. By allowing the word of God to be proven. Now, the word of God is true whether it's proven or not, but when you allow it to be proven in your life, you receive blessing like you have never received before. When David was on the run from King Saul. Just think about this, okay? Think with me. This young man with a motley crew, the king of Israel, and his whole army chasing this man. David knew he was anointed king when he was a young man. And he knew he was going to be king because God keeps his word. And he's done nothing wrong and everything right. One day... David had a chance to be freed up from all this chasing, uh, from all of his trouble. He had the chance to be delivered from the pain and the suffering. David and his small motley crew were walking by, passing a cave, and there is Saul, the king, and his entire army. They were in deep sleep. There is no telling how long they've been walking or they were so tired. They were in deep sleep. A bomb would not have woken them up. They were so deep in sleep. And man, David got his chance. Sweet revenge, right? Oh, no. No. David, God brought you an opportunity. Kill the rascal. What an opportunity, David, to finally you be king. What an opportunity, David, to save your life and save yourself and your family and your friends. A lot of headaches and suffering. Oh, David not only knew the Word of God, treasured the Word of God, but he applied the Word of God. He obeyed it even when it's not advantageous to him. He proved it in his life, and God honored him for it. Demonstrating the Word of God in David's life taught him that shortcuts, shortcuts in your business deals, in your business negotiations, shortcuts in any decision you're making in life, shortcuts are no good. Shortcuts are filled with worse grief. Shortcuts are short-lived. <laughs> 
David, who knew not only the Word of God, but he demonstrated the Word of God in his life. He comes as close to the king as to take his garb and cuts a piece of it. Imagine his motley crew probably was saying, stab him, stab him. He's asleep. He won't even know what happened. He said, no. He cuts a small piece of the garment in order to prove to the king what the Word of God said. Harm not God's anointed. Touch not God's anointed. As demonstrating the Word of God. And trusting, as I said in the last message, trust in God's timing. Let's say it again. Trust Beloved, knowing the Word of God is good, but not good enough. Substantiating the Word of God is what honors God. Proving it in your life is what God blesses in your life. Applying it in everyday situation brings about God's pleasure over you. Do you want God's protection? You have to have God's presence. You want God's presence? Allow the Word of God not only dwell richly, but be applied and demonstrated in your everyday decision-making. Hello, my friends. I want to be like that one out of the ten lepers who've been healed by Jesus, but only one came back to say thank you. I want to come back and say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We are so thankful to the Lord. We are so thankful uh, for your partnership with us so that now we can launch on this 30th anniversary really strong. I had lost all hope, but God gave me joy through your program. I'm sat in the right church, doing the right ministry for the right God because I heard the right message from Dr. Michael Youssef. I was a radical Muslim. After watching your channel, I decided to follow Jesus. All over the globe, leading the way with Dr. Michael Youssef is proclaiming the saving message of Jesus Christ. From the world's largest cities to the remote corners of the globe, we are there ministering on the front lines. Through every major form of media, with teams following up on the ground, the gospel is going forth in hard to reach places. But we need your help to sustain this work. Become a monthly frontline mission partner today and join us on the front lines of this exciting global outreach. Your monthly gifts will enable us to proclaim the gospel and disciple new believers in closed countries As a Frontline Mission Partner, you'll receive exclusive updates from the field. New members will receive a free commemorative DVD set of Dr. Youssef's most inspiring messages as a thank you gift. And if you sign up online, you will also enjoy 20% off all resources in our online store. Become a Frontline Mission Partner today and fuel the global mission of leading the way. You'll be encouraged knowing your gifts are making an eternal impact. Call or visit us online at ltw.org slash frontline. Beloved, listen to me. We waste time, precious time, valuable time being away from the heart of the Father. The Lord, just as clearly as radio, said, this is the man. My office was in the old building still, and that's when Ben Hayden came over and said to me, God told him for two and a half consecutive years that he needs to give me his television ministry. He came and sat and looked in the camera and told his audience, his listeners, his supporters, and he said, you need to support this man. This is God's man. Due to personal health, 
and the recent brain surgery of my wife, I have asked Michael Yusuf to take over as speaker on Change Lives and to be my permanent successor. Probably one of the most fun times, challenging, um, uh, pressure-packed times that, that I spent at the ministry. We went from really only talking about television as a remote possibility in the distant future to leading the way, absorbing the Change Lives television releases. Paul Krauss told Michael that he'd been in a hotel watching CNBC Europe. God spoke to his spirit and said, that's the man to bring the gospel to the Muslim world. Let's welcome Dr. Paul Krauss of TBN. I am here today to ask you if you will join your pastor in sending this gospel into a very dark part of the world. When we were invited to go on TBN and Daystar and so many of the other networks we were on, it launched us to a whole different environment and new opportunities of communicating the gospel. I've just seen the quality of the television show as just a television product, if you will, improve. I've seen the audience grow through television and radio. I could never imagine what God would do through television. Now leading the way is reaching into hundreds of millions of homes proclaiming God's Word more than 13,000 times a week, airing biblical programs 24-7. But what is more amazing are the testimonies of lives changed from all over the world. God is continuing to do amazing things through the ministry of Leading the Way, and thanks to you. Passionately proclaiming uncompromising truth. Leading the way with Dr. Michael Yusuf thanks you for your faithful support through your continued prayers and gifts. At the Church of the Apostles in Atlanta, Georgia, every Sunday I meet people from all over the United States, from Maine to California, and they love the experience. They said, for years we've been wanting to come and visit. And so if you're ever in Atlanta, Georgia, I would love for you to come and visit. Shake my hand, and I want to thank you in advance for making that to be a priority in your life. Visiting Apostles. God bless. Leading the Way with Dr. Michael Youssef is a paid program sponsored by viewers like you.